everybody. <laughs> Let me add a little bit more uh, light to this. Oh, it probably won't let me. There we go. Hi. I am just now waiting for my friend Kathy to come on and, uh, and say hello to me. And she's going to introduce me, which is going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to figure out. Uh, I invited her. We'll see uh, if she's able to go on or not. And uh, all right. I'm checking in with her. Did you get the invite? You should see it now. Oh, hi, Zach. Nice to see you. We've got a few more minutes before we are starting. Hi, Kate Ann. Nice to see you, too. So uh, I am just, yeah. All right. That's good. That's set up. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. We're trying to figure this out. There we go. We just have a few more minutes to go, and I'm waiting for my friend Kathy to um, show up and introduce me. Hi, Martin. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Tonight's topic is going to be on evolving your intuition by releasing your anger, uh, mainly because I've had a lot of people coming into my life lately, especially women who've been struggling with um, who've been struggling with dealing with anger, with uh, it really starting to control their life, especially a lot of intuitive healers. So um, we're going to start in just a minute or two, as I said, when my friend Kathy shows up to give me an amazing introduction. Uh, all right, she did see it, <laughs> and I'll be able to see when she's on. So that's exciting. Oh, there we go. All right, Kathy Lindgren wants to be, and she's watching, and I want to add her. Yes, add. Hello, Kathy. All right, it's almost there. Thinking, thinking. Okay, almost there. So, Kathy, when you're ready, give me a big shout out and give me a big hello. Hi, Anna Louise. I'm so glad you're going to be here with us tonight. Uh, we're going to be going for the next like 45 minutes. Hi, Yvonne. Nice to see you too. Um, it looks like we'll have a great crowd tonight. So if you aren't familiar with who I am, I'll give a little bit of background while Kathy's coming on. And uh, good, more, good evening, Denise. Nice to see you. So my name is Rita Hickman, and um, I am a body-mind expert. I'm a shiatsu massage therapist. I'm intuitive master healer. Okay, let's try it again. Wants to be in my video. Approve. All right, still trying to figure it out. Um, I'm a master intuitive healer. Okay, come on. Hi, Lisa, nice to see you too. I'm so glad you're here. Boy, I have a lot of good friends on. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Approve. Okay, come on, Kathy. I'm so glad you're here. Lisa. Hi, Krislin. Nice to see you too. All right. We're still trying to figure this out. I love technology. It's uh, Facebook's. Aha! <laughs> can you see me? <laughs> I can see you, Kathy. How wonderful to see you. Everybody oh. here is my friend, Kathy. And um, I love her. Hi, Annette, as much as she loves me. Kathy, you're right at the bottom of the screen. So if you can tip your camera a little bit so we can see more of your face. You'll have to let me know because I can't see Oh, great. That's perfect. Is it? You were almost perfect. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I just okay, see a good. Bit more of your, a little bit more of your face. You're down by the bottom of the screen. Okay. Oh, I get it. Okay, more like this. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, Annette. How nice to see you. Well, Kathy... Uh, I just asked her a few minutes ago. I said, hey, Kathy, would you introduce me? You know, because I need somebody who can tell everybody how amazing I am because I'm not very good <laughs> at, at saying how amazing I am anyways. But I'm doing this great webinar tonight on um, evolving your intuition by managing, by releasing your anger. And uh, mm -hmm. I have a lot of great uh, gifts with this because I've had a lot of anger over my life. <laughs> And I had to release a lot of it. And in the process of releasing my anger, I was really able to um, 
Now I, I feel like I've got spot on intuition. I trust myself in every situation possible. So uh, Kathy, if you would like to um, give me a little intro, take as long or as short as you would like. If you could just tell people maybe how you met me and what you like about me and why you think that, you know, I'm, I'm qualified <laughs> to even be talking about it. <laughs> Absolutely, Rita. Um, well, thank you for letting me do this for you. I'm sorry that it took me a while to get the camera to work. I hope it's working. Just fine. Um, good. I met Rita. Uh, Rita, I would think it was sometime this last summer. And uh, I had gone to a class at Inspire Massage. And you were a part, a member of the classroom there of, of the group of students. And so I met you there. And then it wasn't until a little bit later that I actually really hurt my knee. I stepped off of a curb and I heard something crack and uh, that was pretty much it. I had to stay off it for a while. I went to two doctors and uh, they had suggested surgery, except the second one that I went for the second opinion. He said, surgery, yeah, but try physical therapy first for maybe a month and then see what happens. So I did, I signed up for that, but I also signed up to go see Rita because I knew that you, uh, I had heard really good things about her. So I did, I went to Rita and we talked for a while and then she did some of her, I, I, I've never had a massage like this. It's, it's kind of more magical than anything because afterwards I walked out of there and my whole body just, not only could oh, I walk a lot walk. better on that knee, but I'm sorry, Rita, what? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, <laughs> but uh, it felt like my whole body had a lot more flow. Like I just felt younger, like I could move better. And it felt like just things were just uh, the blood was moving better. The muscles were working better. It was it was great. It was a really great idea. I was really happy with myself for trusting my intuition and to go to Rita in the first place for this. And we worked on my knee for probably about uh, three sessions. And I just signed up now for my uh, fourth one because I, I, uh, I just love it. I'm not going to go for surgery. I don't need it. And this... I don't know how it works. I know, Rita, you keep trying to explain it to me, but, you know, I don't really know that. I leave it to you, and it's phenomenal. I'm sitting here Indian style, but I'm not going to mess with the phone because if I do, I'll never see you again. <laughs> but it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really highly recommend her. I can't tell you enough good things about her. Her personality, it's easy. She's so easy to talk with, and um, I love her. So I know you will too. Thank you, Kathy. Well, it's always nice to see how everybody's doing. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I was able to help Kathy get through her knee issue is because I have really amazing intuition anymore. You know, when I was a kid, though, um, and if you want to stay on and stay split screen, you're welcome to, Kathy, or you can check out. Either way is fine. Okay, um, I'll check it out then. Okay, perfect. I'll see, I'll see you at the seminar or webinar. I'll see you soon. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye, Kathy. So when I was a kid, I grew up, as a lot of us did, in a really tough family. You know, and I think it was the culture, too. You know, I think it was just how a lot of us were raised. You know, I had um, an Irish father and a German mother, and the passion and the stoicism came together, and they created, you know, a thunderstorm of, of a life and living. And uh, as all of us have, we've got plenty of stories, whether it will be alcoholism or drug addiction or um, abuse of some sort or sexual abuse, physical abuse. You know, we all have these stories. And the problem with these stories uh, and these experiences that we have, that unless we clean them up, in what, unless we really work on the, on the body-mind piece about it all, then they get in the way of us being able to uh, navigate life very well. So when I hit 30, that was kind of my first rock bottom. You know, I uh, theoretically had everything I ever wanted. You know, I just gotten married. I had a house. I had a job that I loved. 
Um, you know, I had a college degree. I was, I was on my way. I was going to, you know, change the world. But the problem was is that I felt angry all of the time. Every morning I would wake up and here I have this, you know, lovely man who's gazing at me from the foot of my bed every morning. And all I want to say is quit looking at me. I'm so mad right now. I'm so hurt and I'm so angry and I don't know why. And I just want everybody to leave me alone. That's how every day started. And it's not that I wasn't a nice person. I'm an extremely nice person. But physically and emotionally, I felt like um, I was just a wreck. That there wasn't anything that I could do. And, uh, and, and I didn't know how to stop being so angry at the world. And of course, that anger comes out no matter how many times you try to hide it or shove it down or smile at people or say the right thing or think the right thing. You know, a lot of people believe, well, if you want to change, you know, your life, you need to change how you think. Okay, that's very, very true. However, have you ever tried to change how you feel by simply saying affirmations? By simply, um, you know, doing a mantra that says, I am beautiful, I am amazing, I am wonderful, I can do this. You know, the first thing that comes into my mind when uh, I say those things is, no, you can't. Are you kidding me? Look at all of these times that you completely messed up. And so at 30, you know, even though I had everything in my external world, my internal world was complete chaos. Because even though I'd been in counseling, even though, you know, I'd, I'd done the gamut, of uh, looking at myself and personal growth books and self-help stuff and you know Wayne Dyer and Hay House and 12-step and program and Codependence Anonymous and Al-Anon and you know even though I'd done all of those things I still felt angry very angry all the time and I felt lost and stuck because um, a decision would come up and I wouldn't know what to do at all and I spend all of these hours obsessing and worrying about what I should do you know what was the right thing and uh, I wasted a lot of my life worrying and wondering uh, what what I should do with my life what was the right direction so of course my solution was to ask everybody else and uh, in the process of asking everybody else uh, I would take their opinion you know, from the job, from the, from the degree I was going to get, you know, well, get the degree that is a teacher, you know, to the, uh, to the job that I went for. Get the job that works with the government that's going to keep you, you know, around for a long time and has good pension and insurance and all of that stuff. And doing that, following everybody else's um, advice was just fine, except it wasn't what was right for me. I had so much healing to do. I had so much, even though I was so capable and, and smart and functional, um, I didn't feel like I had any intuition. And this is where I really started. I started out angry and I started out feeling lost and confused. And that gave me so many angles and edges that people, they liked me, but they didn't necessarily like me because I would come across as um, sharp, you know, as if I had all of these sharp points. I'd get offended easily. I'd, re over, I'd overreact really fast. You know, this was kind of my life. I could fake it, I could push through, but I spent a lot of time hiding in bathrooms and a lot of times not engaging with people. So this is where I came from. And I spent, oh, my video's interrupted. I don't know why. Um, I'm seeing it pretty clearly on my end. Thanks, Annette. It should kick in in just a second again. Um, okay, so I don't know why this was a problem. You know, I, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, where was I? Sorry. <laughs> Got it. I'm back on track. Okay, so I spent thousands of hours in counseling. And I spent thousands of dollars on self-help stuff, workshops and, and tools and energy work and all of this. And I was still lost. It didn't fix anything. And so I learned that I really had to figure it out myself. I had to figure out how to heal myself if I was going to get out of this really deep, dark hole 
which was probably depression and anxiety and overwhelm and a, a sensitive nervous system. So, you know, I knew that I had to fix myself. And I can't even begin to tell you how much time that I had to spend and how much I risked. I risked my marriage. I risked my family. I risked my health because I was going to find out no matter what um, how, how to heal, how to work through this stuff. And so tonight we're going to focus on one of those pieces that if you feel like you're in a similar situation, if you feel like um, you're angry and you feel lost and your intuition uh, just can't be sorted out, then tonight we're going to give you a, a, a little bit of a guidance. We're going to give you a little bit of help to get to the other side of that. So let's just say that you wake up uh, like I did and you feel overwhelmed by something. You feel angry, maybe about something that you have to do for the day. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. Maybe something you have to do for the day. Maybe something you're not looking forward to. I mean, I'll give today as an example. Um, there was a part of me, this is the second webinar that I've done, and even though, you know, I'm very comfortable on camera because of my background, uh, even though I've got all that, I, um, I was still uncomfortable. I still feel nervous because you think to yourself, can I really help people? Do I really know what I'm talking about? Can I, can I assist them on their journey? You know, we question that and we wonder that about ourselves. And, um, but this is how I dealt with it. When I have a feeling that comes up, when I have anger or hurt or frustration or irritation or discomfort, instead of reaching for something like Xanax, which I do keep in my, you know, in my back pocket should I need it, instead of um, blowing up on Facebook, I sit and I feel whatever it is that I'm feeling. Now I have this as a ritual every day actually. Every morning I spend about 15-20 minutes and I let myself feel whatever's going on. And I don't let myself put any judgment on it. I don't put any um, explanation on it. I don't try to even say, oh, this is hurt, this is pain, this is sadness, this is depression. I don't even name it. Instead what I do is I feel where it is. And when I feel where this pain is, where this discomfort is, maybe it's in my heart because our heart is super sensitive. Maybe it's in your gut because your gut is super sensitive. Maybe it's in my head. Maybe my head's spinning. Or my face could feel tight. Or my shoulders could feel up around my ears. Whatever it is. Or maybe I'm having nerve pain. Or my calves hurt or my legs hurt. Whatever it may be, what I do is I sit there and I let myself be with it. I let myself be with whatever it is that I'm feeling. And I don't intellectualize it. I don't go into my head. Because going into our head is a way of um, distracting ourselves from what we feel. So when I sit there, this is what happens. When I sit there with, let's say, a knot in my stomach, thinking, oh my gosh, can I do this? Am I really capable? I find a little bit of space, like in the morning, and I feel where it's at, and what happens is my body starts to send blood, nervous system signals, and lymph to that part of my body. Now anger a lot of times isn't necessarily um, because we're broken or there's something wrong with us. Anger sometimes is where um, we've got chemicals in our body that haven't been pushed out. You know, maybe we've been angry in the past. And when we were angry in the past, um, we couldn't let ourselves feel it. What happens to all those chemicals, all those emotion chemicals of anger? Well, they get absorbed into our organs. So sometimes our, our anger isn't because there's actually something wrong with us. Sometimes our anger is because we still have these emotion chemicals uh, that are causing inflammation and are causing tenderness. And then when we have a thought that reminds us of it, then it'll lock down. 
then it'll feel like anger and it'll tell our brain oh look you're angry oh look you have a problem so this morning I talked about a friend of mine who uh, when he was a kid and he's a very wise Oneida elder when he was a kid and they were ever in a bad mood his parents would say do you need an enema because they knew that a lot of times things like constipation would make you angry things like feeling blocked would make you angry and the way you unblock these things is by paying attention to them by noticing them you know when your throat gets choked up and you can't speak or your heart hurts because it feels broken or you can't breathe because um, you just because your chest is tight or your stomach's knotted up and you can't eat because you're anxious or you feel cut off from the bottom half of you from you know that that root chakra of yourself because you just feel so um, scared to feel grounded that it's scary to feel connected when you feel those things whatever feeling they may be sitting with it means that your body is going to finally get rid of the emotions that are causing you to feel angry those chemicals that are causing you to feel angry so when I would wake up in the morning when I started to heal this stuff and my stomach would be in knots what I would do is I'd focus on it without the thoughts without the judgmentalism without the pain or the anger and I would just focus on it and my body would naturally start to open up the blood vessels and relax the muscles and humorously enough soon after I'd finally have to go to the bathroom because <laughs> it went from having a locked up stomach and a locked up abdomen to um, to something that was now relaxed and open and could function and move because when we're in fight or flight what actually happens is our digestive system shuts down and fight or flight remember fight or flight is fight as well as flight it's an adrenaline release that gives us a feeling a felt sense so when we feel angry we're actually in fight or flight and our digestive system will shut down and yeah we can still keep eating but we're not going to process it well in fact a lot of times we eat because it's a good distraction from that felt sense but when we focus on it when we put our attention there all of those chemicals can flush out and what tends to happen when we feel angry when we have a felt sense is we give it an interpretation we give it a, a meaning and that meaning like nobody's ever going to love me or this is never going to work out or I can't believe they did this again or, or people are always this way the world is always going to be screwed up you know those absolutes um, we think those absolutes and we look desperately to try to find a reason for why we feel the way that we feel and what that does is it keeps the feeling going it keeps the anger going so one of the first ways to release that anger is to stop putting a judgment or an interpretation or a meaning on what you feel let me say that again when you feel angry or hurt or irritated or heartbroken or anxious if you take away judging that you're not supposed to feel this way you're not supposed to be feeling what you feel when you take that away then the feeling can move on and it could move forward but when you believe that it means something that there's something wrong with somebody else or yourself or that you feel you're stuck in some sort of uh, absolute world where it's all black and white then it keeps feeding that feeling of anger and a lot of people actually are in fight or flight for the majority of their time they don't even realize it we're in high levels of, of adrenaline release and then you talk to people and they don't know why they're so tired and their kidneys hurt and it's because they have adrenal fatigue because their their adrenals have been pumping out so much of that fight-or-flight adrenaline that they're exhausted 
Now here, let me tell you a side effect of when you're in fight or flight. When you're in fight or flight, your mind spins around about three or four different thoughts, and it can't break out of it. It's almost like this weird uh, gravitational pull, you know? So what happens is we feel something, and then a thought comes into our mind because we're trying to figure out or interpret why we feel what we feel, and then we grasp onto that thought, and that thought doesn't go away. And it's like we can't even break out of that thought process. And then we get angry at ourselves even more because now we're in this negative thinking pattern. Now we're in a pattern of um, believing that, uh, that something's wrong with us or something's wrong with our life or a situation or somebody else. And when you're in that obsessive thought pattern, when you're going round and round and round, you are unable to really sense the other things that are going on. Have you ever been in a situation where if you had just been able to keep your wits about you, if you'd just been able to stay grounded or rational, you would have been able to work the situation. You would have been able to talk yourself out of it. You would have been able to fix what was wrong. You would have been able to ask the right questions. You would have been able to feel what was going on with somebody else. So like with Kathy, you know, who introduced me and her knee issue, I was able to use my intuition because I was able to feel what was going on with her and what was happening in her body because I wasn't being hijacked by an emotion. Now let's say I was um, triggered by somebody, be, you know, uh, politics or Facebook or something before I had to work with Kathy. Let's say that it happened and I was in a space of fight or flight. I was in that anger. I wouldn't have been able to help her. I wouldn't have been able to figure out the situation around me because I couldn't feel those subtler things. I couldn't feel the quieter things that were going on. And so instead, I would approach it with a, a bullheadedness, with an arrogance, with um, an insensitivity to what was going on with her. And my intuition and my guidance system would have been way off course. So when you release your anger, when you get out of that fight or flight, when you decide that what you're feeling is perfectly natural and normal, hi Pam, nice to see you, and I'm looking forward to giving you a call. I'll probably have a chance tomorrow. Um, when you're in that fight or flight, uh, you can't see anything else going on around you. You can't. So every time you get angry, you lose your ability, you lose a big chunk of your ability to navigate and look through and, and take advantage of situations which come up for you. You lose the ability to um, say the thing that will be the exact perfect thing to say in the situation. You blow right by it. You completely miss it because you can't sense or feel the other things that are going on with you or that are going on in your environment or your situation. So a lot of times when we get angry, one of the things I want you to remember is that you're going into a sense of fight or flight. And that fight or flight, those feelings of anger might not be from this present moment. They might be from past times or past experiences when you weren't allowed to feel angry, when it wasn't safe to feel that way. Um, when you'd get into trouble or it was dangerous. You know, a lot of those times when we weren't able to um, deal with the adrenaline that was pumped into our system, then yeah, it gets completely absorbed. And then every time we have a thought that, that triggers that part of our body, we'll go back into that fight or flight. Absolutely. And then it hijacks us again and again and again and then we can't find our way out of a paper bag. You can't even figure out what's the right thing to do or the right move to make. You can't be sensitive to the people around you and read the situation well. You lose your ability to read what's going on. And you lose your ability to make good choices and decisions for yourself. So whenever you feel angry, you need to remember you're in fight or flight. And that fight or flight might not be based solely on what's happening to you right now. It probably has a big piece to do with all sorts of other times in your life 
when you couldn't let yourself express that anger or move, move that feeling. So the neat thing about this focusing trick that I do, you know, where you take away the judgment and you just let yourself feel whatever it is it, you feel without coming up with an interpretation for it, without trying to figure it out. When you do that, the adrenaline chemicals can finally flush out of your body. And they'll flush out by sweating. They'll flush out by crying. They'll flush out by peeing. They'll flush out in, in dozens of different ways. But you can finally get it out of your body. Because as long as those emotion chemicals, especially adrenaline, are trapped in your, in your tissues, in your organs, as long as they're there, they're going to create uh, a sensitivity, a high level of sensitivity to things around you. And so your stomach will clench much quicker. Your heart will beat faster in a heartbeat, in an instant. Your throat will choke up and you won't be able to talk. For me, what would happen is I would start to shake because I would have such an adrenaline dump when I was trying to speak my truth that my body would shake, shake and shake and shake. One of my favorite quotes is, um, you need to speak your truth even if your voice shakes. Because that's what happens when we release all of that adrenaline. Hi, Andrea, nice to see you. And it's stuck there. So if you want to start moving and releasing that anger, you need to be present to it and not encourage it with the thoughts which will keep you feeling stressed out, that will keep you feeling angry. You need to, for the time being, put those away and tell yourself something like, these feelings are normal, these feelings are natural, this is what happens to everybody. Based on my experiences and my life and my past, um, anybody would feel this way if they were in my situation. And it's going to be okay. So when you're able to release that adrenaline, whether it's momentary or whether it's from a lifetime of difficulty, when you're able to release that, then your intuition starts to come back. You start to be able to see the world and you start to see all the things that you missed before because your brain and your body and your mind are picking up thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of pieces of information around you that uh, your conscious mind isn't aware of. And so you're, a, you're an antenna for, for all sorts of things going on, for, for ley lines underneath the earth, for sounds that nobody else can hear, for colors that you, know, you wouldn't normally be able to see for uh, waves which are affecting your body. You're an antenna for those. You feel all of them. And your intuition is when you can be aware of them, be conscious of what you feel. But if you're triggering, if you're in a space of anger, if you're in a space of, of overwhelm, then you can't feel any of those things. And your intuition will just feel like um, it's dead. You'll have no idea. So I was a very good speller when I was in uh, grade school, and I always wondered why. You know, I read a lot of books, and, um, and I, you know, my mother was a librarian. <laughs> my dad was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. So books were a huge part of my life. But that wasn't the only reason. What happens is good spellers, and there's a lot of neat stuff to back this up, Good spellers, they look at something or they hear something and they've got a felt sense. They've got an intuitive sense of how to spell the word. The word. Now, if I had been in a place of total anxiety and to total overwhelm, let's say I was on stage for a spelling bee for the nationals, you know, my overwhelm and my anxiety would have hijacked my intuition. So they would have hijacked my ability to spell the word correctly because all I would have felt was how anxious that I was. Because doing the right thing, whether it's helping someone's knee heal 
or whether it's spelling a word or whether it's the perfect time to ask your boss for a raise or whether it's the exact thing to say to smooth over someone's to smooth over a situation if we feel overwhelmed by our anger or our anxiety we are lost we've given up our most important tool and our most important gift for being able to uh, navigate the world and feel safe in the world because no one else can make you feel safe only when you've got that felt sense when you've got that knowing and you can hear it only when you have that sort of intuition do you feel that no matter what happens to you in life you have the confidence that you're gonna be okay you're gonna figure it out and you're gonna know the right answer that's where intuition comes from it comes from your life experiences talking to you through your body that's where the best intuition comes from and so every time you go into fight or flight and overwhelm and exhaustion your intuition is hijacked because the voices are way too loud for anything for for you to even be able to pay attention to what's going on hi Veronica nice to see you um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing next with this whole intuitive healing. Um, I'm starting to work more and more with women energy healers. And uh, thanks, Edward. Thank you for your opinion for that. Um, there's a lot of different ways of, of looking at intuition. Uh, mine comes from an Asian medicine perspective uh, rather than a um, metaphysical perspective. So when I talk about intuition, I'm usually talking about uh, it from that, uh, that Asian medicine, that Chinese medicine, where everything is energy. And so when we start looking that our intuition is something that comes from us, when we start looking at intuition as something that we have power over and there's something we can do about it, uh, it really takes us from a feeling of, at least for women, I know for a lot of women that I know, it takes us from a feeling of helplessness that we're dependent upon uh, messages uh, coming from someplace else and whether we're hearing them correctly, and it brings it back to, to us, where now are we hearing ourselves correctly. A lot of the women that I work with, they don't trust their intuition anymore. They don't trust that... Um, that they know the right thing to do and they've got a lot of spirit guides and they've got a lot of angels that are helping them uh, but there's so many different voices that they don't even know which one to listen to and especially in Asian medicine the intuitive sense is knowing which voice is the one that will take you in the direction that you want to go so the metaphysical absolutely exists and it absolutely gives us advice and it puts us on a great track but if we don't know which voices to listen to if we don't know which ones are in our best interest then um, we still feel lost and confused and overwhelmed I had a friend of mine who um, and he was a hundred percent Oneida he came from a really great long love uh, long lineage of wise uh, Native Americans and uh, what he would say is yes your ancestors are talking to you but whether your ancestors really knew you know worked through their issues and really knew what they were talking about is another thing so your ancestors are behind you and they're always talking to you and they're always whispering in your ear but you need to decide for yourself you need to figure out which guidance to follow which spirit guide to listen to because they'll give you mixed messages and we can start going into the whole oh it's the devil talking to us it's an angel talking to us but how do we know the difference the way we know the difference is we go back to our intuition and if we're in a place of high anxiety if we're in a place of, of a ton of adrenaline being released or um, angry over a situation then we can't hear it we can't hear the voices and we don't have our felt sense as to which voice to listen to. There was a woman that I met a number of years ago and um, she would say to me, she'd say, the universe is talking to me and this is what the universe says I need to tell you. 
And she was hearing messages which were really important for her to hear. But whether they actually had anything to do with me was a whole nother story. I needed to decide for myself whether that story, uh, whether what the universe, she was telling me what the universe needed to say, I had to decide for myself which answer was the right answer. And all sorts of things can get in the way. You're right. Drugs and alcohol are, are a big block to us hearing. Uh, the correct answer and us feeling the correct answer because it numbs us. And it's actually a problem. It's an epidemic in this country because we are so overwhelmed by uh, medications that numb us out so that we can cope that we've lost our own ability to know what's right for us. We've lost our own ability to um, know that the voices that we hear or the messages that we get are the ones that will take us in the direction we want to go because a lot of times they're very conflicting and and very complex so when you come back to that intuition when you come back to that felt sense and you release the the anger by being with it without judgmentalism without um, without criticism without just an acceptance that this is what I'm feeling, that this is what's going on with me, when we sit with it, then it's able to be released. That's the best way I know of to release my anger so that it's not the only thing that I feel or that it's not the main thing that I feel so that um, I can really make great decisions and always know the, the right thing to do in every situation. So I'm developing a coaching program uh, to help women because I really only work with women. Um, I'm developing a 10-week coaching program and I'm gathering information about how to make it the best coaching possible. So I'm offering uh, free 30-minute breakthrough calls for intuitive healers. And I didn't get a chance to put the link in the text at the beginning. Um, I w didn't have a chance to do that, but when I'm done with the live stream, I will. And there was a little bit I wanted to say, and this one I wrote down because it was so important that um, it was so important to me that I get this message across and that I um, express where I came from and how you don't have to be where you've been. So here goes, here we go. You know, I spent a lot of time alone trying to figure my way out through all of my triggers, all of my anger, my adrenaline releases, the pain, the memories, the anxiety, the, uh, the IBS, the everything, the migraines that came with um, my baggage, that came with my issues. And I did it alone. And I spent the last 15 plus years of my life going through the mud and the dirt and the trenches um, to get myself out of that anxiety and overwhelm. You know, it, I, I risked my marriage. I risked my career. I risked my family. I risked my sanity and my health because I was driven because I couldn't live that way anymore. I couldn't live so angry and so reactionary because it was getting in the way of everything that I wanted to do. And so I set on them on my own and I really worked on that. And although going through the trenches and although fighting my way through it and studying and, and you know, really pushing through it, uh, it was effective. But in the meantime, I spent more than 15 years getting to this point thousands upon thousands of dollars in counseling and time. As I said, I made some very risky choices, which I didn't have to make. I didn't have to do it the way that I did, but I was coming from my pain and I was coming from my anxiety and my overwhelm and my anger. You know, there's a much better way of cleaning these things up. You don't have to do it that way. You really don't. I put myself on the line. 
I did that over and over and I ended up with really hard lessons that uh, made my life so much more challenging than it needed to be and I hurt people around me and um, I really uh, pushed the trust that they could have in me because I was so hell-bent on making sure that I healed myself. Now I don't want that for all of the women that are struggling with the same sort of thing. I don't want you to have to go through that the way that I did. I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to risk everything that matters to you. I don't want you to get fired you know, from your job. I want you to be able to leave gracefully. I want you to be able to heal your family relationships like I am. Uh, I want you to be able to feel close again to the people that matter the most to you. I want you to get through and get past the, um, the, the disconnect and the disassociation that we go into when we're overwhelmed. Because when we're in that place, we can't be present to the people that we love and we're no good to them. You have so much value to the people that are important to you, the people that matter the most to you. And you can only be there when you start releasing this anger. And as I said, the trick and the tip that I gave you earlier tonight, it's been around for thousands of years. It's not new, but it's the way that we release anger. It's the main way to release anger is by being present with it. When you release this anger and when you go on a journey that um, changes, that rewires your brain, and you go on a journey that rewires your nervous system, you evolve into the greatest version of who you can be. So I want to start working with these women and I want to start helping you on a really great journey. So that's why I'm offering this 30 minute breakthrough call. You know, because I want to find out where you're at, what you're struggling with most today, and I want to give you a little bit of a direction. So the Intuitive Healer Breakthrough Call is um, a 30-minute chat with me, and we're going to find out the two or three things which are getting most in the way of your intuition, which are keeping you from being the greatest version of yourself that you can be. Okay? So there's a couple more things. Um, one of the things that you might be thinking about is, is this a sales call? Nope, it's not a sales call. You know, I'll tell you a little bit about the program that I'm doing, but the majority of the time is spent really sort of figuring out what's been getting in your way and, and a tip or a body-mind tool or, or a practice that will move you in the direction that you want to move in. You know, another concern that you might have uh, may be that that this is therapy of some sort. I'm going to tell you straight out, I don't do therapy with people. My specialty is body-mind. My specialty is helping us go back to our nervous system, go back to the wiring in our body and in our head, and rewiring it so that um, it takes you in the direction you want to go. So you stop triggering. So you stop um, going into that fight or flight and having that adrenaline release. So when you talk to me, you don't have to give me your vulnerable secrets. You know, you don't have to trust me. You don't have to expose, you know, the deepest part of yourself and your pain or the things that you've been through counseling for. You're probably sick and tired of hearing your own story and I totally don't blame you. This is a way different way of looking at it. This is a way of looking at the things which have happened in your life from a, a, a body mind Asian medicine energy perspective. It's a way of looking at it as in how do we rewire your nervous system, how do we rewire your brain so that you keep spiraling up. And in that spiraling up, I call it polishing the mirror. In that spiraling up, your life starts getting cleaner and better and more effective and your intuition gets amazing. And especially if you're an intuitive healer and or you're a teacher or you are um, someone who intuition is the cornerstone of what you want to do. And even if you're just a healer on the side, even if you're just a healer for your friends and family um, or the people that you care about, 
Your intuition, your knowingness is the cornerstone of your effectiveness, of your ability to read what's going on, of your ability to know the right thing to do, even if the right thing to do is to say, you know what, I don't have enough information about this, or I don't have enough experience about this, and uh, I need to find out a little bit more before we come back to it. Okay? So that's what it's about. And I think there was one more. <laughs> Let's see. Nope, those were the two main things that I know get in the way. So if you're interested, if you want a little bit of help getting on, you know, some good clarity and you're a woman, uh, then I invite you to schedule your 30-minute breakthrough call. If you do it by 9 o'clock tonight, uh, schedule your breakthrough call, then I'm going to throw in another breakthrough call. You'll be able to get two of them. And the second one will be based on... Um, will be based on a very specific issue you want to work with. So the first one, the first intuitive breakthrough call is going to be about what's getting in your way to get some clarity about what's going on. And then the second one will be about, as I said, if you schedule your, your call before 9 Central Standard Time, so I'm here with uh, in Chicago, if you schedule it before 9, then uh, I will gladly talk to you a second time and we can really problem solve and, and get some good coaching done around your specific issue. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're tired of being in fight or flight, if you're tired of overreacting, um, if you think your emotions and your feelings are hijacking you and getting in the way of starting the career or the practice you've always wanted to, or getting in the way of uh, raising your child the way that you want to raise them, or having the relationship you want to have with your spouse, or strengthening and healing the relationship that you may have with your family or your friends. You know, if this is what's going on with you, you there's a way out. You can become someone who gets to the point where you look around at your life and you're kind of like me. I do breakfast every Sunday almost every Sunday, with my parents. That was huge. And they're getting to know me, and I'm getting to know them, and we're really healing that relationship. I'm doing the same thing with my sister. I'm doing the same thing with my husband. I'm doing the same thing with the clients that I work with. I'm able to use my intuition and be in a place of non-triggering, in a place of rationality and compassion so that I really always know the right thing to do. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling that um, maybe there's no way out, and you're tired of being there, then I absolutely can help. And that's what I'm doing the breakthrough calls for. Because that's my mission and that's my passion, is to help all of us together as a tribe move in a really positive direction. So um, do I have any questions from anybody? Is there anything you'd like to ask me about releasing anger or ask me about uh, the breakthrough calls that we're setting up or anything along those lines? Um, because I want to make sure that we all are on a really great page and that I can help you as much as possible. Um, so I think those are the two main things. I'm not seeing anything. And because I'm not seeing anything, I'm assuming I don't have any questions. So I'm going to talk just a few more minutes to see if any questions come up. But um, I'm so glad that you were here with me tonight. Because, you know, a long time ago, when I first started on this journey, you know, I thought there was no way out. I thought that this was going to be the rest of my life. And only when I hit, when I had so much pain and uh, so much discomfort in my body did I decide I had to get out of my comfort zone and I had to do something different. Absolutely, positively, no questions asked. And, uh, and that, of course, put me on a little bit of a reckless, reckless route. Not just a little bit, quite a reckless route in order to expand my thinking, to break through the beliefs that have been imprinted on me, to look at my trauma in a different way. And I did things which, you know, were pretty scary and kind of dangerous because I felt that I had nothing to lose anymore because I'd already lost everything. 
Now, you don't have to do it that way. Hi, Renee. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you're on. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to do it the same way that I did, where um, you just had to wait for everything to fall apart any second. You don't have to do it. What we can do is we can work together, and we can get you moving in that direction. You don't have to be alone. You know, if I had somebody on my side, in my corner, who had been helping me figure all this stuff out, I would have saved thousands and thousands of hours and pain and suffering and misery and, and stress and anxiety. I would have saved so much of that. Um, and I want to help the women who are around to do the same thing. So I'm going to put the link up in the text as soon as I'm done here. And if you make your call, if you set up your call, as I said before, 9 o'clock CST, then I'll throw in an extra, I'll throw in a bonus um, coaching call for you uh, because I really want to make sure that we help people as much as, as I possibly can because I'm only going to be doing this for a few weeks before my schedule really ramps up because of this coaching program I'm doing. So I won't have time to be, to really put myself out there anymore. So now's the time. Uh, if, if you want some help to get out of the place that you're in, I'm your chicky, okay? So I hope you have a great rest of your night, and uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on my live stream at 8.15. Um, we'll be talking about another piece of emotional well-being. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, and thank you, Kathy. Bye.